think it's time for me to do a very different flip-flop toy review on a Sunday. Well, I normally do them on, like, you know, mornings and stuff like that, because I have to get myself ready for education and whatnot. But, guess what? I'm actually staying at home because of the recent consequences, and for the fact I initially thought that prank was an April Fool's prank, but it was actually one that went way, way too far. And uh, i got to tell you what, that was really, really unacceptable for the fact that the police came in after I did something really, really nasty to someone over there who had to sprax here. But anyways, look at the time here. It has literally gone towards 7 o'clock. In fact, it's already gone past towards 7 o'clock, which is, of course, p.m. And um, I can't speak well at the moment, though, because... I actually don't have a sore throat, but I've got a cold with me now, though, so I just don't think I'm not going to perform that well. And i got to tell what is going to be one of the dirtiest with that toy views I'll ever have for pretty much a long time, though, for the fact that, um, you know, I'm not going to perform well, eh? But anyways, we've got a toy train layout of both Tommy and Trackmaster with a beautiful Tommy Blowell E253 series Nico train. I've actually purchased from Malaysia, and it's a very, very Japanese looking train, I like it, I like it, I like it a lot. Okay, I could say no more on this, because we're going to be taking a look at some of the origami, Flappy Birds products, which are either British wildlife collection toys, or not, but one of them is not. And this time I'm actually going to be reviewing toys on the bed, because, well, the sun is setting, and not only that, but we've still got a bit of sunlight for the fact that the days are quite long because we're already in spring already though. And um, I'm just going to move some of these products away. I think we've got about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven for that products, eh? This shouldn't be difficult, wouldn't it, eh? But um, our first with that product we're going to take a look at is um, this one here. It is a adult lesser blackback doll. Transitional Head Plumage Block 12 Pack. And guess what? It's a Generation 118 product. So this product here has actually been sold for at least around, in fact, it's been sitting there for like six months. Like, I gotta tell you what, it actually was first created in either late November or early December before Christmas. £15.50, the product costs though. I thought I didn't show you the packaging though because I've got a very, very severe cold though, it's not as deadly as coronavirus. I haven't got a tissue with me, so I've got a piece of paper with me today. <coughs> oh, yuck. Oh my goodness me, I think this video is gonna dry reach a whole bunch of people though. In fact, it's actually gonna make a whole bunch of people dry reach. Oh god. <coughs> oh god. Yuck. I should wash my hands at the end of this video, eh? And, um, anyways, I'm just going to go ahead and take a look at this part here. And if I show you the back of the packaging, which looks like that. Yeah, it looks much better on the back than it is on the front, though, because these wingtips, they just don't look like they're black. Which is just stupid and just dumb and also, you know, not that very, very, I would just say, intricately or accurately detailed, though. But anyways, I'm just going to go ahead and unpack this very beautiful Super Mario Gummy product with flapping birds on it though. Obviously it's also a British wildlife collection toy because we've got some birds that have to consider to be British. Okay, so this is of course a wintering lesser blackback girl because obviously it's got that. Same with the other side. Okay, so yes, obviously the wings sort of work today. It's an adult, so there's no brown on it, eh? And there it is there. Wintering Lesser Blackback Girl. Also, oh, I'll tell you what. This looks pretty nice and deep there. I love the details on these guys. And since I've made these guys during late November of 2020, I bet you what, I think this is a very different sort of shade of yellow. Because I used to remember that these guys used to have lighter and different shades of very very weird colours that are yellow and I gotta tell what it's literally on the legs the irises on the eyes and also the beaks 
Well, if I was doing herring goals, that wouldn't be the same, wouldn't it? No, because herring goals, and great blackback goals for that matter, would also be like, you know, sort of a pinkish sort of leg colorization, I believe so, eh? And I definitely say yellow legged goals would also have like a yellow sort of leg sort of colorization, hence their names. I gotta tell you what, these guys are pretty much flapping quite nicely, eh? My goodness, they're actually flapping quite well, eh? Lovely wingtips, which are black, obviously, coming from the felt tip markers that are normally used for whiteboard pens and stuff like that, I don't know, whiteboard pen duties and things like that. I'd normally use a whiteboard for doing stuff like that to doodle with, but um, it's quite a very interesting sort of with that product, and I have to say it's very nice, it's quite, you know, interesting, sorry about the sniffs though, because I'm suffering from a cold, eh? Oh my god, eh? it's not going to be one of the greatest with that toy reviews at the moment though, eh? because I got a cold, maybe I should have just waited. You see, sometimes when it's springtime outside there, I know we've got some springtime sunshine, but it's been one of the coldest Aprils that we had in record. It almost feels like Christmas time. Whenever you feel like you've got a cold or anything like that, that can spread diseases and whatnot there. Which is not a very good sign, obviously. Oh my goodness me. Oh my goodness me. I don't know about you, I just keep on saying it, but um... Yeah, that's that product done. The adult, lots of black girl, um... Transitional head cleanage block 12 pack, and we've got some other toys which have just dropped onto the freaking floor. I don't know about you, what was that very strange noise? Uh, I don't know about you, but that's that product down here, right? Okay, moving right along. We've got this one here. It is a Generation 118 product. It costs about £19, and it's called the Lesser Black Bat Girl. Third Winter Sub Adult Flock 12 Pack. What? Third Winter Sub Adult? If it is sub adult, I think it should have been on its fourth year. Uh, but nevertheless, it's very, very interesting. But anyways, there's the back of the packaging here. And there it is, there's this. Ooh, I love the artwork in this. There's some very nice, bold writing here with the black lines. Combined together with the blue. Combined together, eh? Is it sky blue or baby blue? I can't remember what shade it is. And we've also got a nice looking lesser black back girl doing some sort of weird long core. And it looks like it's spreading out its wings, preparing to fly. It's a very mean looking one here, doing a very, very mean looking smirk. And we've also got another one here on the bottom right corner. How cool is that one, eh? And i got to tell you what, Generation 118, that is a long time um, getting these products to be done now. You're being delayed, day. Eh? All these guys are made the same. Uh, I think I've made a product like this before. Yeah, I think there was one that came with some moths on it there. Yeah, I did in a silent toy view in September, and I thought it was pretty... Yeah, it's not one of the best products I've made though so far, when I had a look at that video there. But, um, yeah. Pretty interesting, eh? Obviously they've got like brown and grey colour combinations on the wings here. Black tail ends as well, and also the black tips on the beaks there, which is very, very nice. Lovely gull wing action here when they flap like so, eh? Same with that one here, it looks very, very nice. Gotta tell you what, it looks quite amazing, eh? And here's the other one as well. Honestly, that is pretty much the lightest shade I've ever seen in a lesser black backed girl. You know, I think the lightest shades of a black backed girl, the lesser black backed ones, I would probably find them on the Huglin's girl, which is pretty much called the. Is it the side viewing girl? I can't remember, eh? I think it used to be like the actual subspecies of a lesser black bat girl in, um, you know, the Arabian Peninsula, the Middle East and the Indian subcontinent, but I think it also thrived in China and Japan as a wintering species and uh, these guys whenever you have a look at these ones there, they almost look like a black-tailed girl minus the red detailing on the lines there Ooh, looks like most of the time when you ever see these Color combinations of brown and grey, they've just got scribblies on them. And I also love these brown flanks, which look like that. And I would definitely say that the flanks, which are brown, are basically the inner wing markings of these birds. Beautiful. 
Beautiful indeed at all times, obviously, eh? Beautiful indeed. Flap, flap, flap. Oh, yeah. And I gotta tell you what it looks stunning, stunning, stunning. Um, yeah. No matter how I could say, it looks pretty darn cool. Very nice. Okay, so that's that product done. And uh, I'm, not, I'm not just going to spend my time just basically reviewing every single product in a very detailed way. And uh, i got to tell you what, hopefully we're going to get good here. Let's keep going, let's keep going. Those ones are done. Okay, next let's up, put it here. This is a Flip Flap Origami Flapping Band. It's um, British Wildlife Collection, Adult Herring, Unless Blood Have Goal, Mixed Species, Pairing Bonds, 12 Pack. Hooray! Yeah, I'm sorry I didn't show you the product carefully out, yeah, which looks like that. <laughs> My bad, I didn't mean to do that though, that was my mistake. Hey, but anyways, this product cost about £16.50. And actually, when I made this product here, this was also made in the same time as the first two flip flap products I did. And what's quite surprising is, is that it was originally going to be a Generation 118 product, but I actually classified it as Generation 122 for the fact that we're in 2021. In fact, we're in spring of 2021, and the generation actually first came out um, on the 31st of March, the day when Mario sadly died, but it was actually more of an April Fool's joke because Mario from Nintendo is still alive. There's the back of the packaging here. Hopefully that train is running nicely, right? Oh, that was a very fast one packing here. Looks like this packaging has seen far much better days. Like so. And there's actually something strange at the back of the packaging there. We've got some sort of highly detailed lots of black girl soaring towards these two there on the top. And there's also a very strange looking second winter lots of black girl. It could be a juvenile or a first winter. It looks like it's got some very, very weird eyes. It's got a very weird eye on that one there. Can you see that? It's a very different looking eye. Right, let's take what we have. This is the one I feel like it's going to be quite nice. And it flaps so, so well. Flap, 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 flap. Oh, yeah. And once again, we've got the pink legs. Fleshy pink legs. Going to the herring girl next. Lovely silver grey backish wings. I uh, don't know about you, but I'll definitely say that herring girls have got a much more darker sort of tone in grey than that of Glaucus girls, although I might be completely and actually wrong here. Uh, this is a lesser blackback girl, we've got this sort of typical slightish greyish sort of girl with yellow legs on it though. Slightly slimmer and smaller and compact looking in size. And it feels like once again, as I said in previous videos in 2021, I would definitely say that the new changes are there'll be more herring girls than lesser blackback girls. Indeed, sadly to say, eh? And uh, I gotta tell you what, I, I know it's just it's pretty sad, but um, it's true. It's very, very true. At times like this, I have to say, eh? that's pretty nice, though. That's a wintering one, a wintering herring girl. There you go. And I definitely say Glaucus girls might have a lighter turn of. Uh, grey, I believe they're like some sort of icy blue, blue grey. But I might be totally wrong. There you go. There's the name here. Wintering Lister Blackback Girl. And there's another one there. And it looks very, very nice. In fact, uh, the Lister Blackback Girls are not that much as common as herring girls, but um, in the winter, I believe so. And um, this is a breeding one. Yay! And we've also got. This one, it feels like we're getting loads and loads of wintering lesser blackback girls and any other things like that one. Eh? Luckily, there's no brown here. I thought it was a sub adult, but it is an adult because I can't see any freaking brown markings. Obviously, the brown markings on, you know, on a girl indicates it's a juvenile, but um, it really doesn't mean so. Obviously, the head part makes it much more of a juvenile. Combined with some adult traits on it, though. I don't know why herring and lesser black bat girls have got this sort of dirty tinge of brown streakings on their head, though. I don't know why. Um, can someone leave in the comments down below for me, please, though? 
Why do herring and lesser black bad girls have got this sort of tinge of brown, which are sort of dirty and sort of streaks in terms of the pattern designs? So. But anyways, I'm gonna move on to the next with that product, which is much one, which one of the much more recent ones here. This is a white-bodied lesser black bad girl dual. Um, actually, it says dual to triple beat color variations fishing flock 12 pack. Ignore the word copyright there because it's not really highlighted in black but in grey. It costs about £17.99 or £18 as you can see it there on the top. Maybe. If I go a bit closer it'll be a much much better sort of job eh? I'm doing eh? Might be doing another one after doing this one eh? Maybe make another cigar themed product involving water. <laughs> Yuck. I've got that cold of me though. It's the reason why I said yuck is because I've got some sort of weird cold in my nose. It's hampering the performance of me doing a good job on doing these sort of these styles of toy views, eh? There we go, we can see the British Wildlife Collection logo here and the Flagging Birds Pigeon, obviously, eh? There's the back of the packaging. We've got some lobsters from what we had recently in the winters of 2021, but they're a lot much more cheaper. That's not like product. That's not doing any great stuff though to me though, but um, we've got a newt. Ooh, that's strange. It's based on a common small newt. I'm going to take a look at what we have and see what we have. And because we've got a newt, there's actually something a lot more curious at the back of the packaging. Alright, so. Um, here we are. There's the back of the packaging here. And it actually says possibly blue crayfish. If you know what a crayfish is, uh, there they are, they're light, small, freshwater lobsters. Obviously, they're, I think they're much more smaller than an average lobster. Uh, that's what they look like there. Obviously, they're like the same creatures that you get on these sets that were released in the winters of 2021, I believe so, eh? Like, you know, January and February and possibly March. Very nice. And we've also got this one here, this is a newt which is like a salamander, I believe a newt is a type of salamander there's the other side here I mean how did you go wrong? it's quite a very sort of small detailed sort of toy eh? Um, looks quite nice but it doesn't have that mudkip sort of esque sort of aesthetic design there but it looks quite nice I hope the um, Nintendo shouldn't basically sue me for basically stealing any Pokemon designs. Uh, this is a minnow, which is like a species of fish I've have actually heard of though. I've actually seen quite a few minnow fishies though. I think they normally come out that um, when the weather is a bit warm, I believe so, eh? There you go, um, looks quite nice though, here's the other side here. Okay. That's a very nice interpretation of a minnow, which comes in this sort of colour here. If I go a bit closer, it looks like it's got a colour combination of, how do you say, green with red on it? And there's the other side here. Very interesting. Very interesting colours indeed. And there's the other one there. Okay, it looks sort of very, very nice detail. I don't want to spend too much time looking at these. Okay, let's move on to the lesser black bat goals. Next, this one here. Obviously, that's an adult. Uh, you can tell it's an adult because it's, that's what they look like, eh? There's no brown or anything there in its head. It's just a plain white lesser black bat girl with just a slightish grey back with wingtips, which look like that. And if I go ahead and take a look at a second winter lesser black bat girl. And remember, they've got much more darker brown colorizations here than what a herring girl has. There you go. And they've also got much more of a very different sort of triangle, which is actually a lot much more bigger. And yes, their wingtips, while well, in the shape of a triangle, they're actually a lot much more bigger than those of the adults. There's the other side. And there's the current face of today. This is what a juvenile girl would tend to look like these days. And uh, here's the other one there. I definitely say from future generations, this design will still be there forever. 
which will be very, very nice to hear. But there will be some people saying, Oh, I've been trying redesign it to make them a lot more realistic for me, please. But hey, I don't care. But anyways, we've got this one here. I think this is a third winter, unless I black that girl, because it's got the brown streakings in its head, and also the brown wing flanks, which look like that. It's got some juvenile girl-esque style traits on it. The leg colours changed to yellow. I don't know if you can see that, but um, it is there, and there's the other side here. Now all of it is pencil detailing, I believe so. I think for the fact it's compatible with water, there's the black toe in here. And that is the beautiful black big wingtips that you'd normally find on juvenile girls, which look like that. Okay, so that's a very nice interpretation of what we've got here. It's not a bad product, quite nice though, although I do feel like it's way too many of these 100% paddle of water, such like origami, flapping birds, British wildlife collection, seagull toys. It's quite interesting, and also a bit boring as well, because there's loads of people thinking, oh, it's too much of it, can we just stop? But anyways, uh, let's move on to our next seagull product though, which is going to be um, this one here. This is a third summer um, herring girl flock versus small crabs twelve pack. It costs about thirteen pounds ninety five. There's the back of the packaging here. Ooh, that is looking like some sort of weird goofy version of Krabby from the Pokemon franchise. And we've got a very derpy looking um, ticked off seagull, which is obviously a herring girl. There. That looks very, very weird in perspective view, eh? I'm not sure if this artwork of the seagull there has been ripped off quite a few times eh, but it looks quite nice and we've got some different species of crabs, there's actually two of them here, we've got the edible crabs and we've also got the shore crabs it's quite funny, I actually see edible crabs a lot more than shore crabs because shore crabs, they tend to be seen a lot more alive at the shores than out to sea which is quite nice and they normally look like this, which is green, but they also come in different colours here, I believe. This is a red one. I think I did a red, a big one that looked like King Ray. I think it was like a giant spider crab or something like that one, eh, from Japan or something. And there's the other side. And there's a, um, this one here looks more like brown rather than orange whenever I look at it. I believe it's a short crab. And these three here, they're just... No more edible crabs. Okay, let's take a look at the third, second. Oh, sorry, I nearly said the word summer, but I just actually said the word second. Uh, yes, they are third summer herring girls. Nearly said winter, didn't I? Because they don't have the brown streakings on their heads, which is quite strange, eh? Here you go. There's the color combinations here of grey and brown, which looks like that. And what's quite a bit scary is, is that sometimes whenever I make the flabbery gummy flapping birds, sometimes there's a little hole though for the fact that the bird has been deteriorately uh, ripped. Uh, for the fact that some of these models have been ripped accidentally. They've been poked from a hole from a pencil or something, which is a bit too sharp. But I can't see any problems like see any problems like that though. Eh? It's quite a very nice design on these seagulls though. Mind you, whenever I make so many Sega products, they are actually quite amazing. Obviously, eh? Like, there's so many of these big Sega products, and I'm just sort of thinking, where are the black-headed Sega products? You know, those are the ones I might go for next, because obviously, you know, not only for the fact it's one of the most asked um, for species of gull ever, though, but also, I'm not sure I could say this, they're not as common as the two large gull species, both the herring and the lesser black bat gulls. And as a fun fact, herring gulls can enjoy all sorts of water. It's not just seawater, there's also fresh water, especially on hot summer days. And they can catch slow creatures like slow crabs. You know, small crabs actually, there's slow creatures like small crabs, slow small crabs, and um, during times like that. Which is quite amazing, eh? There you go, I love the artwork is a bit of bubble rising it says the word summer. Pretty interesting. And we'll take a look at the next product here. Uh, it's called the 
Summer plumage herring girls feeding at Seashore Roost 12 pack, £14.95. That's one pound a lot more expensive than the other photo I did, which featured the third summer herring girls. And we haven't got fish though, but we do have mussels, starfishes, a couple of starfishes, a single crab, and a single scallop. Very interesting, eh? And it looks like Crabby is running away from his life because a seagull that looks like Wingo is about to bite his bum. I'm not going to say the A word because if I said the A word, the video would be demonetized in a flash. But I love the very stunning artwork of this seagull here. I believe it's a third summer one. Trying to basically, um, wow, it's about to gobble on this crap though for for lunch, for dinner. I actually had dinner, eh? It's, um, just gone past. Oh my god, I just saw a great big lesser blackback seagull just lying on top of. Well, obviously, we're literally inside, so seagulls can't go inside unless you have food. There you go. This is a purple scallop, obviously. And then here are some starfishies, which sadly enough they're just based on star. If only they were based on common starfish, they would have been much more accurate to how would an actual starfish would be. Okay, and I've also got a crab. Obviously, it's an edible crab, and it's just the same crabs that often do. Eh? Sometimes the the abdomen part of the crab though can be a bit more different on the back there in terms of its shape and design. It's sometimes it's a bit Weird though, there's the mussel here, which looks like that. Sadly, there's no fleshy bits inside, you know, paper fleshy bits inside, eh? But it looks quite nicely detailed, eh? For a mussel like that. If only if I could put black on top of it, it would be much more nicer, maybe purple as well. But, anyways, let's take a look at the Erring Girls. Uh, this is the third summer, I think it is. Let's take a look. Yes, it is! It is a third summer herring girl! Hooray! Let's take this one here. Uh, obviously, it's the same. It looks quite nice. And we've also got oh, just a couple of standard herring girls. And we've also got a couple of sub adult herring girls. Now, what's different about these sub adult herring girls is that they also have brown onto them, which is pretty interesting, eh? Here you go, it's black. But there's also a colour combination of brown here, which is quite interesting. Here's the other one as well. Here's the other side. If I flap its wings, there's actually some brown details like that. Left off from what used to be third summer herring girls. And most importantly, if you look at the head, the profile on the head, the, the head profile looks very different for the fact you've got an orange eye ring, or a red eye ring, and a yellow iris. But these third summer herring girls, they've got what well, looks like to be a blackish greyish sort of eye ring though, which is pretty much different whenever you think about it, eh? Still retaining the brown wing flanks, eh? I uh, should have called them wing shoulders, but um, nevertheless, it looks quite nice. And there's actually another muscle here. Sorry, I didn't realise there were two muscles. There's my second muscle here. So just to prove to you guys, there's one muscle here, and there's also the second one. Two muscles and one product. Well, whenever you think about it, it's almost basically of me saying, it's basically almost saying two birds and one stone, but with muscles. <laughs> How crazy is that? And I'm also going to put the crabs back on. It's best to put the repacking shot on my YouTube channel because there'll be people saying, oh, you didn't show it. Well, I'm showing you guys, eh? There you go. Well, sort of nicely packed, but, not really, but anyways, nicely really packed. And last but by no means least, it's not a Seagat product, but we've got this Snow British Wildlife Collection. It is a flip up origami flapping birds. I think I've done it before. Uh, maybe not though. It's actually a very, very newish product to me though. Um, I have heard of this breed of pigeon here. It's called the White Budapest High Flyer Pigeons Flock 12 Pack. And with the name suggesting it comes from Budapest, they are a Hungarian breed. And if you don't know where Hungary is, it's basically a Central European country. And, you know, I could argue for the fact that Hungary is pretty much, you know, a place that is in Eastern Europe, but no, it's not. It's in Central Europe. Pretty much famous for their goulash, which I'm not very familiar with. Their 
that sort of mirror because that's the sort of cushion I'm not that quite keen on too. There's the and that many there. And I will tell you that it looks I have to say these guys they look quite nice in different poses. And look at this, all named respectfully but comes in twelve different colour variations. I love the bubble writing on this sort of packaging. It looks very, very nice. Uh, mind you, I think the way I'm doing these two reviews is quite nice. Eh? I love the full art of the letter O. Using this as like, wow, look at that. It's useful to use it as a pigeon head. Very nice full art of a pigeon flying. And um, let's see how many color variations of Budapest high flyer pigeons we've got there. Remember, we've got the name White. And yes, just because it's white doesn't exactly mean that the pigeons are going to be fully white. In fact, partially white, but very visible enough. And uh, this one here has got a black tail with white wings, a grey belly, or maybe rump, I can't remember, eh? Um, and it's also got a purple neck collar, and also a grey head and beak with an orange iris. Same with the other side. Looks very cool indeed. Very, very good indeed at all times. Flap, flap, flap. Next up is, oh sorry, before I show you here, it's got the name Budapest High Fly Pigeon. Obviously the blackness on that helps it to cover the words. There you go, we've got another one here, okay, with some white wings, just plain white wings. Boring, boring, boring. But we've got nice looking head design, of the fact it's green, and we've also got a colour combination. That is actually very unusual on a pigeon beak. You know what's funny, I don't often see a colour combination of halving peach and grey. It's quite a very interesting sort of unusual colour sort of detailing or designer. It's very, very weird there, yeah, sort of combination of toys like one Once again, we've got the name there. Sometimes the names on these Budapest half fly pigeons, they're very, very small, but at the same time they can be quite a bit big as well, eh? Uh, mind you, the bottom part, this front part here looks quite nice and purple and uh, this one here it's got a green and purple neck collar with a gold wing like design there with just big black wing tips uh, which are big triangles there, we've also got black lines there to indi indicate where the wing tips are and we've also got a nice black tail here eh? very nice and if I open up very very cool, Budapest Half Life Pigeon. And I've also got this one here. This is a very different colour. It actually reminds me of that movie Spies in Disguise. I haven't seen that movie, but I did see clips of it. And um, obviously it's one of Blue Sky's last films on um, Friday. Yeah, that's a very nice detail sort of pigeon, eh? Well, it was quite a bit sloppy on that section here of the eyes. It's more like an eyebrow, that one, eh? To me, that section here. Yeah, it looks quite okay, eh? Obviously, it's like some sort of weird white brown bar pigeon. Because of the fact it reminds me of the blue bar pigeon. Now we've got a brown bar pigeon with whiteness. And this one is just a white Budapest half fly pigeon with just black lines. Not much detail effort into it, but um, still works. And we've got the name Budapest half fly pigeon. It looks like it's in small writing there, just to make sure it's not that visible enough, eh? And we've also got a green headed and neck pigeon with no neck collar and a big orange iris on each side. Lovely grey detailing on the beak. Very fancy detailing, I believe, eh? And here's a plain looking piece of like Budapest half fly pigeon with not much detail on the phone today. Eh? And here's another one there, which looks like that, eh? Anyway. Um, yes. Just got a brown tail band at the end there, and we've also got a brown looking head. Maybe it could be orange. I don't know, but it looks quite nice, eh? And we've also got this one here. But look at the neck colour though, it's got brown, but behind it's got green. And also the eye colour is not just orange for the eye ring, but also black and yellow for the main iris. And I can see some seagulls outside here, they're just uh, I gotta tell what they're just literally calling, and they're also sort of. I would just say it. 
It also sort of uh, bleeding as well. That's why they're sort of flying as well. They're quite active though. But I'm just covering pigeons at the moment, eh? Yeah, it looks quite nice. We've got what looks like to be a another pigeon, eh? Which is of course a Budapest High Flyer. Okay, so we've got a big yellow eye on each side and a grey neck collar. And we've also got another one there. It's got these typical pigeon color colours of green and pinkish purple and brown. Pretty much the same. With some very different attributes into it, eh? Almost identical to this one here, but that's different to the uh, the other pigeons. And last but by no means least is the bin chicken pigeon because it wow, it's just in the sort of looks like that front section reminds me of what a bin chicken would normally look like. It's sort of very strange. And there's the orange irises here, which therefore look quite nice, I have to say, eh? Very very nice. And uh, there's my Budapest High Fly Pigeon. Well, that's pretty much about it in that sort of rough and ready video, eh? Sorry, I gotta tell you, I was suffering from that cold, which was quite, how would you say, unscrupulous and quite manky and nasty, obviously, though. But, anyways, I gotta tell you what, that video has been quite hard for me, though. And I gotta tell you what, I know it sounds quite rough, but this is definitely a video that uh, I don't sort of often make though on a Sunday and I gotta tell you what it's quite amazing I rarely ever make videos like this in the afternoons or in the evenings for the fact that I'm normally away but because of the consequences I had recently on April Fool's Day I don't think I'll be able to go back and do a long and emotion project on that sort of month though like you know May I believe or which will be of course next month or for this year I believe they next month on this year day, but anyways, that's that product done. The white Budapest High Flyer Pigeons Flop 12 pack, 17 pounds, 95. And I gotta tell you what, it's quite nice. Uh, I don't know how long I'm actually gonna produce videos for. That's a big question. I'm just gonna beg for because obviously, because of the fact that I have to stay at home and do some remote learning and just work from home and because of the consequences I had recently they I don't think I can just go ahead and sh straight forward go and do some animation work but anyways I think that's about that in this video please give this video a like subscribe for more flip that videos in the future and I'm hoping that I might be able to do some more Flip Flop Origami toys throughout April, May, June, July, possibly, I think, um, I think August would be very obvious though, and possibly, um, a few fringes of September, but I don't know how it's gonna turn out though, eh? It's gonna be, well, fun, 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 but I don't know how long or the fun would literally last for, eh? So anyways, I think that's about that in this video. As always, thanks so much for watching, and goodbye for now.